for Connecticut Public Public Radio. Today, we have live in the flesh Trent Mabry, a comedian that if you go on YouTube and you look through this man's history, you're going to see jokes start in that time and where he is now in 22. They have evolved like like Pikachu to Raichu. Uh, this person currently is operating out of New York City, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. New York City. And he runs a podcast called There You Go with Trent Mabry. And for somebody that loves a good Richard Pryor story and loves a good Chevy Chase rebuttal, pun intended, uh, definitely check out what this guy has to talk about on his podcast. But big monologue aside, the number one question everybody wants to know, Trent, how are you doing today, man? (laughs) I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing a okay. It's a nice sunny, uh, sunny Saturday, two o'clock. Waiting to watch this boxing fight with a few of my friends, see what happens. But uh, can't complain, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So puff piece question. Now that we know, let's let's delve into the the nitty gritty. Um, on a scale of one to ten, Trent, how badly did you think that your grandma wanted to have a night with Sean Connery? <laughs> Go ten. Ten? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she she loved him. Yeah. And uh what was it about him that she really, really appreciated? I think, you know, there's not really any more like real manly men anymore, you know? Yeah. They're the kind of they all kinda of died out. <laughs> we just get you look at me and you, we're a couple of couple of real scrawny yeah. dweebs, you know? Yeah. We could we could be managing an XFL team. I know what you're saying, man. <laughs> But with that in mind, then, uh, when I started doing the deep dive of your stuff, uh, there was a bit in 2018 that I related to heavily. Not because, you know, I think you're taller than me, more lanky, but I look like I could have been in the Goonies at the age I'm at now. But uh, when is the last time you went skateboarding? Oh, geez. I was in middle school. I, I, I thought that was what I needed to do was try skateboarding. And yeah, I had a big, I had a big wreck, a big crash. Uh, I had a long paved driveway. Nice. But then it would like it turned into gravel. So part of it was paved, and part of it was gravel. And so like cars and stuff would track gravel on. And I, I hit a rock one time and went flying. Damn. And uh, got a big like uh, rock in my elbow, and had a big giant bump on my forehead it probably should have gone to the hospital i probably got a concussion but after that i was like ah, this is not I'm, I'm done yeah <laughs> stick to like tony hawk pro skater and stuff yeah but that was when like tony hawk and stuff was huge like the all the games and stuff and i was like oh this is awesome i should try to do this in real life and i quickly realized <laughs> you can get seriously hurt yeah stick to stick to comedy but going off of that question because i love tangents did you have a favorite Tony Hawk game growing up? I liked, uh, I think it was called Tony Hawk Underground. Hell yeah. Is that, yeah. yeah. The one where you could pick up your skateboard and walk around in the game. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Good call. Um, so going from Tony Hawk's Underground, and I've already said, but going through your content a lot and the evolution of the, the Pichu comedian to the Raichu evolution, um, your your zebra in jail ethnic gang group joke is one for the books. I love oh, it. Thanks. Yeah, man, it's it's just great. And like, what I wanted to ask is, when you first wrote it, or at least when I first saw you perform it, it was 2018. So mm-hmm. when you first wrote it, compared to now, um, what is it like performing that joke? When you know. You're about to do a new bit of material. Maybe it doesn't land well. You know, four years later, you see on TikTok, people are like, oh, holy shit, this rules. But also, how long does it take you, on average, to perfect one of your jokes? Yeah, so I I kind of pick and choose when I do that one. I haven't done that one in a while. Um, I feel like a lot of the times when I write a joke it's usually I usually don't change it that much right 
Um, but I feel like within the past like two years, I've really started to feel like I enjoy my material. You know, like I feel like I'm just now finding my voice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that one. It, it, you have to kind of like see how the crowd is before you bust that one out sometimes because yeah. it can it can really bomb <laughs> with the wrong crowd yeah that's one of the things i've got a few questions uh to jump around to but going off of what you just said it'd be a nice segue uh the reason i reached out is because we're already joking about it you know bart simpson and millhouse over here like um the women have it rough bit not just for the pauses that you do um are incredible but what you're actually saying uh, is it's not just relatable, but it's like, hey, I got to I gotta show this to some friends. This is some good stuff. Oh, um, thanks. Yeah, dude, of course. But uh, one of the things I wanted to ask is now that you're talking about like, ah, oh, you know, sometimes you got to dip your toe in the water to, to test out the audience, that type of stuff. Have you ever had a time where you're performing a joke and it just – goes horrifically but more importantly i'm specifically trying to figure out like if you ever perform that women have it rough bit and you had an audience member you know trying to put their ego into the story more than your own <laughs> no not with that one that one usually does pretty well i feel like i set it up well enough that you can't really i don't know i feel like i set it up where you can't really tell which what I'm trying to say at first, you know. Um, but there's a, I had a few shows. I did a horrible show for like a uh, it's called the Mooresville. It's a city in Indiana where I'm originally from. Right. I did the Mooresville Chamber of Commerce dinner. Woo! <laughs> and uh, it was just a sea of old people, you know. Yeah. And I don't know what the guy was thinking that put it on, but. He go, I go, do you have to be clean? I'm not, like, filthy, but I'm also not clean. And he goes, well, we're not, a, like, a, a church crowd. So I took that to mean, okay, you don't have to really be clean, you know. Uh, so I get up there, and I do a, a joke about, like, I look like I smoke weed, but I don't, is the premise of the joke. And um, that that gets maybe a chuckle. And then I just I do more of my set, and everything else after that just bombs completely. Complete silence. And he actually ends up walking up on stage. I'm supposed to do like 15 minutes. Shit, I get about like seven minutes in. He's walking up on stage. I go, oh, looks like I'm looks like I'm getting pulled off. <laughs> and then so he pulled me off stage, and. Uh, and then I had to sit for like another hour and a half in the like dinner because I had to get paid. Right. So they had me at a table with like the guy that put it on and some other people and they, they gave out like awards and stuff and I had to sit through all that to get paid 50 bucks. Yeah. All right. Shout out to uh, all the dinners in Indiana. But besides yeah. the, the 50 bucks, uh, did you get some food out of it? And what was the food they were serving? Yeah, you got, you, got, you got a free meal out of it. <laughs> So it was sweet. Yeah, it was totally worth it. All right, sweet. Then I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I asked that one because it's kind of puff PC, like oh, comedian. Tell me about a time you bombed or whatever. But uh, <laughs> for this next one, we've got two true or false questions for you. One is a user submitted one from a fan. Huh? So try to do just doing a thing like I scour through TikTok and DM people incessantly. But the first true or false question, Trent. Are you the illegitimate son of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke? <laughs> uh, I wish. Yeah. Uh, that's unfortunately false. How did uh, how did that interaction happen? You just bumped into him somewhere? Yeah, he had like a documentary. He made a documentary about the actor Paul Newman. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. Um, but I, he had like a screening in New York that I went to and I talked to him a little bit afterward. Heck yeah. I was just uh, watching Before Sunrise the other day. Great flick. But uh, the next one, our first user-submitted true or false question for Trent Mabry. Is your middle name really Louise? (laughs) No. That's false as well. 
Interesting. I like to remain a man of mystery, you know. Uh, no, my <laughs> real middle name is Daniel. Oh, okay. But my buddy Zach and I, in like middle school, we just thought it would be funny if I acted like my name, my middle name was Louise. So that's how I made the, the email. Hell yeah. It was also my Facebook name. Oh, there you go. It's, it adds more to the Mabry lore, but this woman from yeah. TikTok, uh, I think the reason why she was asking is because her middle name is Lou, just Lou. And she oh, like, that's oh, interesting. This, this is some interesting shit right here. <laughs> but uh, all right, so moving on, we're on the second page of questions. Um, are you still afraid to walk alone in broad daylight? <laughs> yeah, always. Always. Okay, right there with you, pal. And then from that, if we're talking about day-to-day stuff, I already brought up There You Go, but tell the folks at home about your podcast, There You Go with Trent Mabry. How did it start, and why should people give a damn, man? (laughs) Well, I started it during the pandemic because I was bored, and I couldn't do stand-up. And then I thought, uh, why not another stand-up with a podcast? You know, that's what the people need. And it started out as, like, me giving advice. People would, like, email and, and, like, ask for advice and stuff. And then, you know, um, I would have, like, comics on and we would give advice. But then I quit getting emails and I was having to, like, write my own emails and stuff. And I was like, "Ah, I don't want to spend this much time doing it. So I've, I've transitioned into, like, doing, like, interviews with, with older comics and writers and stuff. I just talked to this guy named Peter Melman. He was a writer on Seinfeld. Nice. All right. Uh, that's going to come out in a, in a couple of weeks. Heck but yeah. Nice. I enjoyed the interviews more than the advice, so that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, it seems but if you love like- comedy, you like old comics and, and stand-up and sitcoms and stuff, you should check it out. So, with that in mind, are there any dream projects with comedians that you'd love to work with? Oh, man. Um, well, I was, like, like my be-all, end-all goal would be, like, to host a talk show, like a late-night show. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Host talk show. Yeah, write that down. I'm going to write, I don't know, let's say things go well, business-wise. I'm going to keep that one in mind. That sounds good. Yeah. So, going off the there you go vibes, um, one question that I have for you, I can't remember the comedian's name, and I know you'll, you'll definitely tell me because he did a spot on uh, Richard Pryor, white person voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, who is a better comedian in your opinion, Richard Pryor or Chevy Chase, and why? Oh. Uh. Well, the guy who did that was Jeff Altman. Shout out to Jeff. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, well, they're different. Richard Breyer is a, is a stand-up. It's hard to compare. I'm a huge fan of Chevy Chase. I love Richard Breyer, too. Um, this, is, uh, this is kind of a cop-out answer, but obviously stand- Richard Breyer is one of the best stand-ups of all time. I would say he's not a great comedic actor. Chevy Chase is a great comedic actor. Uh, you didn't like his performance in Superman 3 as just <laughs> Richard Pryor? Come on, man. What? <laughs> no, I, I I concur with that to the highest degree. And uh, I, not to really get all prophetic with comedy and all that crap, but when you go back to episode 7 of the first season of SNL and you watch the two of them do the wigger and N-word bit. Oh, yeah. It's it's palpable the amount of power and drug usage that that show had and it really was this counterculture on mainstream television and then you look at it now yeah and it's like peter dinklage in a wig dancing trying to do like his best sprockets yeah it's 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 kind of crazy what it turned into it's like i was just talking about this with somebody it feels like it used to be like cool cool people on it, you know, the cast was cool. Now it just feels like theater kids. Yep, I know exactly it's what you mean. Very bizarre. So, uh, if we're talking about things that are underrated, overrated, great transition from Lord Michael's dumb. What is one movie or band Trent that you find insanely overrated? Oh, a movie or band? 
Take your time. Yeah, that's tough. A band, this is not, I feel like people, a lot of people agree with this. A band that, the first band that came to mind is U2. Dude, let's go. Absolutely. Yeah. So overrated. Uh, yeah, terrible. Yeah. The only song that I'm like, if it comes on, I'll keep it on, is uh, that With or Without You song. But that's mostly because when I was younger, I'd watch Friends, and I was like, oh, this is going to happen for me, man. This is going to happen for me. But, dude, I I agree, 100%. Yeah. That's South Park thing. Friends, that's the Shazzo show, overrated. Friends? Ah, I agree. I think the first couple seasons were wicked good. But, uh, yeah, that one dragged out for far too long. But, uh Anything, uh, when you said band-wise, and Friends, TV show with the optional, but a movie you find overrated. Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to think. Not Superman 3. No, Superman 3. I don't don't know if that's rated at all. (laughs) I'll say I'm not a big fan of, like... I can't say it's overrated because I never watched it, but I don't. I'm I'm sick of all the superhero movies. So like the Avengers, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, I never. I would say it's overrated, but I never never watched it, so I can't say for sure. But I'm not a fan of like. I think it's too much. We've we've gone too far with with the superhero stuff. I agree uh, to the to the highest degree, and. Uh... Pretty much with that, I could talk about superheroes all day. I don't want to take up too much of your time. We're almost at the three minutes until, you know, interview over. But <laughs> so for the past 10 years, I've been building this blog. I've been building this brand, and it's starting to pay off, pal. Um, I've asked everybody two questions. The first one, how are you doing today? Extremely important. I just uh, interviewed a tarot reader and spiritual witchy woman. Um, oh really? Yeah, and I, for the first time, I got like a negative response where she was like, "I don't really like that question," but I res- oh, wow. I respect it. Yeah, it, it was interesting to dovetail off of that. But the second question I've asked everybody since uh, hip hopper of uh, I love college fame, but if you ever have a chance to te- check out the song Tangerine Girl, Asher Roth, I asked him about his ideal perfect breakfast, to which he responded, well, that's, that's a really great question, man. And uh, Trent Mabry, giving you about 11 questions. We've made so many Superman 3 jokes, cracking things <laughs> about the XFL, our body posture, but what the people really need to know. Trent, in as much detail as possible, you know, how much pulp in the orange juice? What is the rate of crispness to softness in the bacon? Please describe for the Connecticut public public radio viewers your ideal perfect breakfast. Oh, baby. Well, first of all, that's awesome. You had an Asher Roth on. Yeah, perfect breakfast. I would have to go, I'm a, uh, if I had the time <laughs> to sit down and enjoy this, I, I go biscuits and gravy. Okay. So with sausage, sausage gravy. I would say, you know, three, four biscuits. You chop them up. You, you get the fork and the knife, and you cut them up. You tear them into pieces. You, you pour the gravy on it. Now, if you're feeling spicy, you throw a little hot sauce on there. Maybe some Frank's Red Hot. A couple, couple drops of that. And. Um, I would go with a nice uh, cup of coffee, cup of Joe. You sit down, you turn on, you turn on Saturday morning cartoons. There you go. And you enjoy, you enjoy your day, you enjoy your morning. You may, you may. Oh, you also, you might if you're really hungry, you get a nice uh, cinnamon roll. Ooh, now, a nice cinnamon roll in New York. Where are you going, pal? Well, there's all kinds of places. Um, I would go, I don't know, I don't have a good spot. I I used to live on the Upper West Side, it was right by this place called Ore Washers, which was like a, like a happening joint, everybody loved it. I thought it was incredibly overrated. Ah, okay. Nice. Uh, and my bodega, they don't really make like cinnamon rolls and shit. I don't know. I haven't found a good cinnamon roll spot in New York. I've only been here. This is coming up on my. It's like a, a little over a year. 
And I just moved to so I gotta explore the neighborhood some more. So besides exploring the neighborhood on the quest for the right bodega cinnamon roll, when you're having also thanks for going into detail. That's the whole freaking point is the whoever you're interviewing, you wanna have the soul pop out and like the detail you gave chopping up the biscuits thank you for that but uh what cartoon would you be watching ideally on saturday morning i was uh they don't really do like saturday morning cartoons and stuff. it's all it's all changed from when i was a young uh, lad yeah. uh I, I was a big like uh i love dragon ball z <sighs> it's not really a saturday morning cartoon though yeah. um I enjoy Spongebob, you know. They have that block of, like, I don't know how old you are. 28. Oh, you're older than me, so you know this. They have that block of, like, uh, like on the WB, when it was the WB, they had, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all that shit. Cubics? I love that shit. You remember Cubics? Cubics, yeah, I remember Cubics. <laughs> Dubba, 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 and then this big 3D robot where all of the production value went to him instead of the kids. They look like they're melting. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Those are the those are the glory days of uh, Static Shock, too. Have you ever watched that? Oh, I'm Static Shock. I'm hoping that, uh, that people have talked about doing a live action adaptation of that forever. But uh, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing me back to nostalgia. I definitely don't own every episode of Dragon Ball Z on VHS. Who would who would have that much of a Patrick Bateman? Uh, you're only a crazy person. Yeah, all truly insane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. All right, Trent. Those are all the questions I have for you today. Uh, I'm gonna go figure out how I'm gonna do commentary for this UK fight in a little bit. That's gonna be freaking ridiculous. But I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you so much for following your dream, and um, I know I, you know, not to pry into like, hey, when was the first time you made someone laugh or that type of thing? But from 2018 to 2022, it's more than just the WB time block of let's check in each season to see how this guy's doing. We're at a point now where Raichu is about to walk into the door of the Seinfeld apartment and go, oh, Raichu. <laughs> so. Uh, just thanks, man. I really appreciate it, and all all the best. Hope we link up at some time. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Heck yeah. All right.